So welcome to chapter five uh, in grade seven math. We are now looking at parallelograms and parallelograms are a pretty cool shape um, because they kind of look like a rectangle and they kind of look like a rhombus and they kind of have some really cool properties about them. Um, and we'll just look at, learn about them today. So if you look up online what the definition of a parallelogram is, um, it's a four-sided, which means it's a, a quadrilateral. So anything with four sides, a four-sided polygon is also called a quadrilateral. But what makes it specific, so this is a quadrilateral, just so that you know that is. Quadrilateral is a four-sided polygon. What's special about a parallelogram, though, is that it has two sets of parallel sides. Now, if you need to review what parallel mean, parallel means that the sides will never intersect. And we represent that with either a double arrow or a single arrow on it. That means that I can continue these lines on forever and they will never ever cross. So they're at the basically the same um, slant or to the side. There are different types of parallelograms. So we have three here. Um, there's a rectangle. And so I drew a little rectangle on the left. And so a rectangle has two sets of parallel sides. These are parallel to these. And the those are parallel to those on the sides. What's also particular about rectangles is that they have right angled corners also. So these corners are all right angles. So is this a parallelogram with four right angles and equal sides? Well, if we learned earlier, rectangle does not have equal sides. Does it have four right angles? Well, it does have four right angles. Parallelogram with equal sides. Well, it doesn't have equal sides. So it is a parallelogram with four right angles. A square is a special type of parallelogram where also the side lengths are all identical. All four side lengths are identical. And it's still a rectangle because it has four right angles. So that means, is it a parallelogram with four right angles and equal sides? Yes. And let's just check, does it have equal sides? It does, but it also has equal angles. Rhombus. Rhombus has the parallel sides. What's special about a rhombus is that all four sides are identical as well to the square. However, they do not have 90 degree angles in the corners. So a rhombus is a parallelogram with equal sides. So let's just review all of these. So if we have all of our polygons, and then we have the polygons is our entire space here. So something like a pentagon is over here. And then we have now our space of quadrilaterals. We'll make this fairly large because we have to have space inside. Quadrilaterals are four-sided polygons. So again, our polygons here would be something like a pentagon might be a good example of that one. And a pentagon is not a quadrilateral. Then we have certain types of quadrilaterals that have two sets of parallel sides. And so that would be our parallelograms. So parallelograms are specific types of quadrilaterals, and these have two sets of parallel sides. So there are some quadrilaterals that don't have two sets of parallel sides. An example might be a trapezoid. A trapezoid looks like that. So, which means it has one set of parallel sides, not two, but it still has four sides, so it's still a quadrilateral. Now, in our parallelograms, we have rectangle squares and rhombuses, or rhombi. So, if you can see, the square is actually both a rectangle and a rhombus. So, that is the intersection in between my two Venn diagrams. So, of all of my parallelograms, squares are both rectangles and rhombi because squares have 90 degree angles so this means 90 degree angles but rhombi also have equal sides and a square has both of those now in class we're going to be looking at the formula of particular parallelograms, but all of the formula, all the formulae that we're going to be learning for parallelograms works for rectangles, squares, and rhombuses. So which means if you already know the formula for rectangles, then you'll already know the formula for par parallelograms as well. 
So we'll continue on in the next lesson looking at the actual formula for the area and the perimeter of a parallelogram. Hope you understood this lesson.